Hello, welcome to my talk. Today, I will be presenting a new data-driven control method for distributed systems, namely the non-cooperative distributed MPC with iterative learning. This is joint work with professors Constantino Scassis, Manfred Morari, and George Pappas. Many of today's control systems are large scale and spatially distributed. Examples may include smart cities, drone swarms, and intelligent transportation systems. And in such systems, uh, there might be hundreds of autonomous agents in a control network, and they may also have communication constraints. Uh, this made a centralized control solution uh, not possible for real-time control. And so distributed control methods are more favorable in this context. But when you are designing distributed control policies, you need also to consider the interactions between uh, different uh, autonomous agents. And such interactions can be very complex to handle. And finally, in such applications, there are big data readily available. And the remaining questions for the control engineers is how people can use uh, this big data to improve the safety and performance of the closed loop systems. In fact, those challenging aspects on control of large scale systems actually motivate our work. We will we'll show that we can use data to ensure safety and improve performance of the closed loop system. And more importantly, we'll be focusing on designing distributed control law to maintain the operational scalability. Here, I'm assuming the global system is a standard LTI system with polytopic state and input constraints. And moreover, I'm assuming um, the global system can be partitioned into several subsystems uh, with state coupling. Now, if you look at this partition subsystem dynamics, it has dependencies on the neighbor states. And this is not good for prediction if you are using, let's say, MPC. In order to get rid of neighbor states, we require each subsystem to maintain a reference trajectory here denoted by X tilde. It basically captures a rough plan of the subsystem looking into the future. And you need to make sure that the actual states of the subsystem do not deviate too far away from the reference trajectory. Finally, you will need to update the neighbor with your reference trajectory from time to time. At the end of the day, the subsystem dynamics would become a linear system with a norm but time varying offset term C of T and an artificial disturbance term W of T, which basically captures the coupling effect from our neighbors. Based on this simplified dynamics, we can further introduce the nominal subsystem, which essentially ignores the disturbance term. Next, I will use results from robust control to deal with the effect on the disturbance term. To be more specific, the input now is split into a nominal part V of T and a linear error feedback term. The error states are basically the difference between the actual states and the nominal states. Since the disturbance now is bounded, you can show that the error states will be bounded in a robust positive invariant set. Next, you need to make sure that the nominal states do not deviate too far away from the reference trajectory. And this is also called a bounded in compliance constraint. With all those tweaks, we can now ensure that as long as neighbor respects the bounded in compliance constraint, the original state and input constraints of each subsystem can be now satisfied despite the neighbor's state deviation. Here, I'm also providing some additional references on distributed and robust MPC. With all the subsystem partition techniques I just introduced, we can now write down a infinite horizon optimal control problem for each subsystem. In particular, given neighbor's reference trajectories, the only decision variable in this optimization problem now are the nominal control input of subsystems I. And the, the dynamics are now completely decoupled from the global system. But in general, 
you need approximations to avoid the infinite horizon formulation because you want finite numbers of decision variables. One way to approximately solve this problem is to consider this so-called non-cooperative distributed MPC technique proposed by Farina and Scatolini. In particular, they truncated the time horizon to be finite, and so you would have a receding horizon control or MPC problem. Here, you need to offline construct the distributed terminal cost functions and terminal sets to guarantee feasibility and stability of the closed loop system. Overall, this is a very practical control method for distributed systems because each agent can solve a small dimensional problem in parallel and you need to communicate with your neighbors only once in each control loop. However, the limitations here are that the distributed terminal cost function and terminal sets may not be easy to compute in high dimensional spaces. And the closed loop nominal trajectory is likely to be suboptimal for the infinite horizon control problem. These limitations actually motivate our work and we will show that by constructing the terminal cost function and safe sets in a data-driven fashion, we can easily ensure safety and improve the control performance for the system. The setup of our method is quite similar to the iterative learning control literature. Here, we assume that the initial and terminal states, as well as the reference trajectory of each subsystem would remain the same over all iterations. Once the system reaches the terminal state, it is considered as having finished one iteration. And then we'll reset its states to the initial state and do it all over again. One technical assumption here is that we require a finite time instance T prime, after which the reference trajectory will become zero for all subsequent time instances. This actually makes sense in practice because you always want your system to converge to the equilibrium. In this case, we assume it's the origin. And this kind of reference trajectory can be generated by the non-cooperative DMPC, uh, which I mentioned a couple of slides ago. The closest work that would allow us to perform iterative learning in the context of predictive control is the learning MPC method proposed by Rosolia et al. The core result in their work is that the convex hull of realized states is in fact a control invariant set if your system is LTI and the MPC problem is time invariant. And by using this convex hull as the terminal set in MPC and updating it with more and more realized states, it is guaranteed that the control performance of the closed loop system will improve over iterations. However, Recall that our prediction model is nonlinear, more specifically, it is non-homogeneous because of its offset term C of T. And the MPC problem also has a time varying bounded in compliance constraint, saying that the nominal state should be in a set E of T defined by the time varying reference trajectory X tilde. So the learning MPC technique is not directly applicable in our distributed control setting. Our solution is to consider instead a time varying safe set for each subsystem I. More specifically, the safe set at time T is the convex hull of all nominal states at time T over all iterations. Here, I'm showing a visualization of the convex safe set at time T equals to one. Intuitively, the safe set dictates a region around the reference state. In this region, the system is allowed to explore in order to improve the control performance while not violating the constraints. The convex safe set is also a control invariant set at this time instance because all states in that set would satisfy both the dynamics and the bounded in compliance constraint. And similarly here, I'm showing the safe sets at time t equals to two and three. Now, for this particular example, the reference trajectories would be zero after t prime equals to four. Notice that now the subsystem dynamics become LTI and the bounded in compliance constraint is time invariant. And in this case, we actually recover the learning MPC formulation. 
Finally, we use a time varying barycentric function as the terminal cost function in the MPC problems. It is essentially minimizing over convex combinations of empirical cost to go at a particular time instance t. Now we are ready to introduce our distributed learning MPC formulation. The MPC subproblems are very similar to the non cooperative DMPC, except that we use the time varying convex safe set and barycentric function as the terminal set and cost. And these are, of course, data driven and constantly updated over iterations. Since the system is decoupled, we still have low dimensional subproblems, which are convex QPs and can be solved efficiently by each agent in parallel. Moreover, there's no communications among agents that is required during online control. We have quite strong guarantees for our control method. First of all, in terms of the nominal subsystems, we can guarantee recursive feasibility and asymptotic stability at all times. In terms of control performance, we can guarantee the results actually converge to the globally optimal solution of the infinite horizon problem. And the cost over iterations will be non increasing. For the actual subsystems, we can guarantee robust constraint satisfaction despite the deviation from uh, reference trajectories. And we can also guarantee that the global system will converge asymptotically to the origin. However, we cannot guarantee non increasing performance improvement for the actual subsystems and the global system. This is mainly because of the non-cooperative coupling effects from the neighbors, and we don't have control over these. In order to see if our algorithm is performing well on the actual subsystems, we use two metrics to determine its empirical performance. If you care more about a particular subsystem, then you would keep track of the cost to go function for this subsystem. Instead, if you care more about the performance of the global system, you should look at the cost to go defined by the global states and inputs. In the end, you would pick the iteration index that minimizes your chosen metric and use that to determine the result of the learning procedure. As our numerical example, we consider a benchmark power network system, which is composed of four power generation areas. Each area can be described by a four states linear system, and it is subject to dynamic coupling effects from its neighboring areas. The control goal here is to regulate all states to the equilibrium. In our case, it's the origin. Recall that we need to offline design the E sets um, used in the bounded compliance constraint. In bottom, I'm showing some numbers of this set. These are designed for our particular example. Let's first look at the learning outcome of the nominal subsystems. In this table, I'm showing the iteration cost for the four subsystems over all iterations. In bottom line, I'm also showing the optimal cost of the infinite horizon control problem as a comparison. This is obtained by solving the optimal control problem with a long enough horizon. For all iterations, we are able to guarantee recursive feasibility and asymptotic stability. You may observe that the iteration cost of our subsystems indeed converges to the infinite horizon solution after 29 iterations. And the costs are non-increasing over all iterations. Now, in terms of the actual subsystems, we are looking at metric two, which is the plant-wise performance. Here, we use the non-cooperative distributed MPC as the baseline for comparison. After 10 iterations, we are able to achieve a cost reduction of about 25% comparing to the baseline. And surprisingly, this result is only 0.3% worse than the centralized MPC solution. Of course, we wouldn't expect this to happen in general cases. Finally, 
I'm showing the learned state and input trajectories in red lines. Comparing to the baseline trajectories, which are shown in black, the learned state trajectories appear to have less oscillations. And we are able to use much less control efforts for the states to converge. This can translate into huge operational and economic benefits in real life control problems. As a summary, we have proposed distributed learning MPC, which is a iterative learning control framework for distributed systems. We have strong safety guarantees and empirically we can provide good performance improvements. More importantly, our method is very scalable and easy to deploy thanks to the terminal cost and safe sets constructed from local trajectories. And we require no communications during online control. In the future, we want to investigate how we can also learn the reference trajectories. And we want to um, extend our methods to the context of cooperative distributed MPC, which is also a useful method for distributed control. And on the theory side, we want to make connection between our method and the popular um, multi-agent reinforcement learning algorithms. Thanks for listening and please feel free to reach out to me uh, for any questions.